Hello, Calculus 2 students, Math 1342. We have arrived at my favorite quiz of the semester. I love this material. Um, it looks kind of intense, but the, the different series tests are what makes Calculus 2 my favorite of the calculuses, and I'm so excited to go over the, this quiz extra practice with you. So let me just remind you, we have this test table, which is in our Canvas course. We need to be comfortable with all of this, okay? Even though we focused on this up here in the last quiz, term test is something we can use. Um, if the terms don't go to zero, you're finished. Term test diverges, right? Um, but also sort of P-series, geometric series, these come up when we are using comparison, limit comparison, things like this. So um, all of these tests are wonderful. All of these tests you should feel comfortable using this week. Well, let us begin the quiz extra practice. 1A, if I look at the terms, I see n squared in the numerator, n to the fourth in the denominator. The terms are going to zero. But also that thought process of thinking about what dominates numerator and denominator can help me figure out how to attack this series because this looks like a P series. So this looks like the following. Well, and it goes from one to infinity, it would be n squared over n to the fourth, which is one over n squared. This is a P series where P is two, bigger than one converges. Now, so far I have justified the convergence of this series, and this is not my actual series. This series here is not a P series. And so to fully finish the problem and justify this series I'm interested in, I need to make a comparison. Um, you might think direct comparison, but you see we have an n squared plus n. Okay, so can I confidently say this? Okay, is this the case? That's what I would need to use comparison test. Uh, term by term, less than or equal to the terms of a convergent series. I don't see that here because of the plus n in the numerator. And so I'm going to use limit comparison. What we do, we take a limit as n goes to infinity. You take the nth term of one series and you divide by the nth term of the other. And um, provided this limit is finite, and positive, then, oh, I left off the squared. Then both series converge or both series diverge. We need non-negative series here, which I definitely have in this case. So this would be n to the fourth plus n cubed over n to the fourth plus four. Now you see this limit, we can see this is one, which is positive. And so we quote the test by the limit comparison test. My series, n equals one to infinity of n squared plus n divided by n to the fourth plus four. Well, it has the same behavior as this, which I have justified, and that is converges. So we have a convergent series here. Now for 1b. Um, well, I have a k squared in the numerator, 3 to the k in the denominator. The terms are going to 0 because k squared grows significantly slower than 3 to the k. Well, what are we going to do here? You might see, right, try to make some comparison to this. This is a convergent geometric series. but both comparison and limit comparison are going to be kind of problematic here. So we have to think, what else can we do? One option, which I personally will not do, but one option is, oh, here, just look at this function, right? This function we can integrate and is continuous, decreasing, non-negative, things like this. So I could use the integral test. Personally, I don't wanna integrate this. I'd have to use integration by parts twice. I also have to remember how to integrate um, a base three exponential function and it's a lot of work. So I personally am gonna do ratio test and where I got that in my mind 
is because it goes back to me thinking it's kind of like this, right? Um, the ratio test, if you recall, I think about it as being a generalization of geometric series. And for something like this, it will work wonderfully. So we take absolute value, AK plus one over AK. Well, this series is non-negative. And so I can just, um, I don't have to write the absolute values again, but this would be K plus one squared divided by three to the K plus one, and then all over K squared over three to the K. Now, when I invert and multiply, I'm going to line things up that match. So my numerator, I have three to the K, my denominator, I have three to the K plus one. And also in my numerator, I have K plus one squared. And my denominator, I have K squared. Now you see this is one third times, well, I have this big quantity squared and this is K plus one over K. Now I can take a limit. So we take a limit as k goes to infinity of this absolute value, ak plus one over ak. This is a limit as k goes to infinity of this. This was simplified. And I should maybe move this down just slightly. This is simplified. But you see what's happening here. Inside of the square, this part, this goes to one as K grows without bound. And so this limit definitely exists. It's one third times one squared or just one third. This is less than one. And so we quote the test. We'll put this part in a box over here. This was a ratio test by the ratio test. And then we state the conclusion at that k equals two to infinity of k squared over three to the k converges. This is what we get using the ratio test on this series. Now, so far we have two convergence series, but it is definitely not the case that every series converges. So let's work some more examples. Letter C, immediately root test. Why do I say that? Because I have something all to the N. This should you know, shout out root test, root test, root test. This is what I will do here. And so what we need to calculate is the nth root of absolute value of a N. Well, the series is non-negative. And so I'll just write the nth term and then take the nth root. The nth term is n over 10, natural log of n, raised to the n, and then we take the one over nth power. You see, we have um, power to a power, we multiply. We just get n over 10, natural log of n. Well, this is wonderful n over 10 natural log of n, I can take a limit of. And this is precisely why I use the root test here. And so I take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of absolute value of a n. This is a limit as n goes to infinity of this n divided by 10 natural log of n. This is infinity. n grows faster than natural log. And so, well, this is bigger than one. And so we quote the test by the root test. And then we state the conclusion, the sum n equals three to infinity of n over 10 natural log of n raised to the nth power, this diverges. Letter D. When I see sines and cosines, I immediately think that they sit between minus one and one. Sine and cosine sit between minus one and one. And so um, 
What this says about my numerator is four minus the sine of K is less than or equal to five and bigger than or equal to three. Okay, now we can divide everything by the square root of K. If this was just a sequence, or if you think about the terms first, it's really squeeze theorem. This goes to zero, this goes to zero. This is as K grows without bound. And so these terms are forced to go to zero, squeeze theorem. Well, turn test does not apply. Okay, great. But this thought process also helps me because if I look at, say this one, um, k equals one to infinity of three over the square root of k. What do I know about this series? P series, P is a half, diverges. Well, constant times, P series, great. So this diverges. And so I can use comparison and I will use this side of it. I won't use this side because if I wanted to compare to five, the sum of five over the square root of k, I would be term by term less than or equal to a divergent series and that won't help me. So let me just erase this part, not because it's not true, but because I don't need it in my comparison. Okay, great. This is also like this, not negative. Now everything is set up perfectly. What I need to just do is justify um, what I said verbally. It's that this is a constant times a P series where P is one half less than or equal to one diverges. And I already have my comparison set up term by term, my unknown series. This one is bigger than or equal to um, the terms of a divergent series. Well, and they're both non-negative. And so I can just quote the test by the comparison test. This series, k equals one to infinity of four minus the sine of k over the square root of k. Well, this diverges. So now we have had two series in a row that diverge. Wonderful. Next is E. First of all, note that this is alternating. Uh, we could explicitly say which type of convergence we have, absolute convergence, conditional convergence, or divergence. But if you look at the um, quiz practice, we're not asked that. For 1E, all we are asking is converges or diverges. And so I don't need to specify the type of convergence. We will need to do that in number two, right? You can see below. But in 1E, I just want to know, does this alternating series converge or diverge? Okay. Knowing that I just need converges or diverges, I can just jump right in with an alternating series test. The absolute value of AK is one over, you see we have K, this is to the two thirds power. And this satisfies for alternating series tests, we need absolute value of AK plus one, less than or equal to absolute value of AK. Definitely, because um, we have a fixed numerator and the denominator is growing. And so in absolute value, the terms are decreasing. Also, we have the limit as K goes to infinity, absolute value of AK. This is a limit as K goes to infinity of one over K to the two thirds. This is zero um, because the denominator is growing without bound and we have a fixed numerator. So these two together, together with the fact that my series is actually alternating, it gives me converges. So we quote the test by the alternating series test. And state the conclusion, my alternating series minus one to the K divided by, um, this is the cube root of K squared. This converges. Um, 
just as a comment, we do know this converges conditionally because this series here, if you look at the series, this is a divergent P series. And so um, the sum absolute value of AK will diverge here, but the actual series converges. This is precisely conditional convergence. We weren't asked that in this problem, so I won't write that though. Okay, letter F. Well, we have so many things going on in this series, but fundamentally I see a bunch of factorials. And so without even having to think too much about what's happening with the terms and growth rates, I can just jump into a ratio test. Okay, so let's look at absolute value an plus one over an. Now, in this example, my terms are non negative, so I won't write that again. Um, I'm probably going to do it this way n plus one factorial times n plus one factorial over. Um, two n plus one factorial, <laughs> that's a n plus one. And then divided by, we have n factorial, n factorial, and then over, we have two n factorial. Um, we did one in class that had a two n factorial in it. And we just have to be a little bit careful when we go to cancel some things off. But before I do all of that, let us line things up. Okay, that matches both the n plus one factorials in my numerator, but right underneath them, I will write these n factorials. Then I have a two n factorial. And then just like we saw in class, well, just distribute, this would be two quantity n plus one. This is two n plus two factorial. Well, now I need to um, see what I can cancel off before I take a limit. So let's move down to the next line. N plus one factorial over N factorial. This we have practiced multiple times. Um, we just get an N plus one in the numerator. So I will have N plus one. I will have N plus one. And then for the moment, let me just write this. Now, when we have this two N plus two factorial, March back one, two N plus two times two N plus one, March back one. The next one is a two N, okay? And the next one would be two N minus one, two N minus two, two N minus three, down to three, to two, to one. And so what you see is all of this is precisely two N factorial. So I put this here. And now you can see how this will cancel. I just have one more step to have this fully simplified. I have moved things around a little bit. Um, and then I added this note. Um, in particular, this one is something I use two times that n plus one factorial is n plus one times n factorial. I used it here and here to write those two as just n plus one times n plus one. And then I also wrote this two n plus two factorial is two n plus two times two n plus one times two n factorial. Now, well, we have one more step, right? Uh, to simplify this, once we see here, this part is one. And so we're left with just n plus one times n plus one. And then we have two n plus two times two n plus one in the denominator. This I can take a limit of. Maybe I'll just copy this and paste. We will move to the next page to finish this problem. We take a limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value a n plus one over a n. But we have simplified this. And so this is a limit as n goes to infinity of this. Exactly, that we have simplified. Now, how do you find the limit of this? You have two options. You could multiply out the numerator, multiply out the denominator, and then just look at the highest power of n. This works. Probably me though, you see, I can look at it as this part times this part. Note that here, this goes to one half. And similarly, this one approaches one half. One of the properties of limits is you have to limit 
of a product, um, you will just get a product of the limits. So this limit is one fourth, which is one half times one half. This is less than one. And so we quote the test by the ratio test. The series n equals zero to infinity of, we had two n factorial in the denominator and we had n factorial squared in the numerator. This series converges. This was ratio test. Now we're on the last one, number two. This is the only one where we're specifically asked converges absolutely, conditionally, or diverges. So how do I approach a problem like this? First of all, this is alternating, definitely. And so the first thing I do is I look at the terms. Do they go to zero? If the answer is no, then we're finished. Term test diverges. That's kind of the easiest case in a way. Um, these terms are going to zero really because if you look at the absolute value of AK, this is one divided by um, six to the K plus K squared. This goes to zero because the denominator is growing without bound. We have a fixed numerator. Um, and when you multiply by minus one to the K plus one, uh, you'll just be oscillating towards zero. So the terms of my actual series definitely go to zero. Well, now I want to think, does this series converge or diverge? That would be step two. And this I can say something about, um, because if you sort of think about, this is the way I would do it. You think about what's dominating here. It's the six to the K and I have a plus K squared. So the denominator in this, the absolute value of AK, this is bigger than the denominator here. Bigger denominator means smaller fraction. So definitely this comparison is true. Maybe I should move this here. Now this series, k equals zero to infinity of one over six to the k. This is geometric. This is geometric. Where r we can see is one over six. Absolute value of r less than one converges. And so you see what I have here? This is a comparison test. And so let's quote the test by the comparison test. This series, k equals zero to infinity of the absolute value of a k converges. Okay. This is enough to answer our question because immediately the answer is absolute convergence. When the series where you take the absolute value of the terms, when that converges, that's precisely the definition of absolute convergence. And in particular, it says that this series converges. That is a strong type of convergence. It converges absolutely. This is the end of quiz five extra practice. And thank you. Good luck on the quiz. Thank you.